SWAT team hunts down an LAPD officer. Dreaming of becoming a police officer since his childhood, Christopher Dorner made his dream come true in 2005 by joining the Los Angeles Police Department. In addition to being a police officer, Dorner was also a United States Navy Reserve officer at the time. However, as time went by, things became extremely ugly and Dorner gave up everything that he once stood and fought for. It all began on July 28, 2007, when Dorner and Officer Teresa Evans, who had trained Dorner, responded to a disturbance call at a hotel. The complaint was about a man named Christopher Gettler, who was suffering from schizophrenia and dementia at the time. Both Dorner and Evans arrived at the location and arrested Gettler. However, the following day, Dorner filed a complaint about his senior, Officer Evans, saying that she mishandled Gettler during the arrest. Dorner alleged that Evans kicked Gettler two times in the chest and one time in the face. In addition to Dorner's claims, Gettler's father also came forward and said that his son had told him that one of the officers kicked him while he was handcuffed. Following Dorner's filing of the complaint, an internal investigation was initiated into the matter and Evans was assigned to desk duty and not allowed to earn money outside of her LAPD job. The investigation went on for seven months, with investigators interviewing several witnesses. Two hotel employees testified in favor of Evans, saying that they did not see her kicking Gettler. Even Gettler himself was brought to the police station after Dorner filed a complaint against his senior. Gettler did have injuries to his face, which were treated. However, he never mentioned being kicked in the face by Officer Evans. But to everyone's surprise, in a videotaped interview with Dorner's attorney, Randall Kwan, Gettler said that he was kicked in the face by a female police officer during the arrest. However, when Gettler testified at the hearing, his response was deemed incoherent and non-responsive. The investigation concluded that Officer Evans did not kick the suspect and that Dorner had lied. This proved devastating for Officer Dorner, who was fired by the LAPD in 2008 for making false statements in his report and in his testimony against Evans. Following his firing, Dorner appealed to the California Court of Appeals, which, after a tiresome and lengthy process, referred to the original decision as correct on October 3, 2011. Expressing his frustration at the end of the ruling, Dorner said, I told the truth. How can this ruling happen? After a while, everyone forgot Dorner's case, except Dorner himself. As time went on, he became bitter. There were thousands of scenarios going through his mind, and let me tell you, none of them were ideal. He had now lost belief in the police department, an institution that he once held in very high regard. Dorner had even begun to see the people in uniform as corrupt human beings and his enemies, and was now thinking of becoming a serial killer to hunt them down. Nearly two years after the ruling of the California Court of Appeals, Dorner embarked on the journey of becoming someone that he once idealized to fight against. All these months that Dorner spent jobless had made him bitter, and it changed him into a completely different person. After he was fired from the LAPD, proving himself right wasn't the only thing that was going through Dorner's mind. He had also been busy preparing a document that he called his Manifesto, which I will share later. Dorner started his campaign on the 1st of February 2013 by sending a package to the broadcast journalist at CNN, Anderson Cooper. The package included files of his complaint against Officer Evans. It also contained a bullet-riddled challenge coin issued by LAPD Chief William Bratton and a note inscribed with one minute of angle, which was an attempt of Dorner at boasting about his accuracy with a rifle. Dorner's first victims were Monica Kwan and her fiancé, Keith Lawrence. The police found dead bodies in Lawrence's parked white Kia Optima. Since Monica was Dorner's attorney, Randall Kwan's daughter, nobody thought that it was Dorner's doing. However, Dorner's ex-trainer, Teresa Evans, rang the alarm bells and told the authorities that she suspected Dorner of killing the couple. The LAPD started searching for Dorner, who was nowhere to be found. However, they did discover his Facebook page, which revealed many things about the ex-cop's current mentality. Remember I mentioned Dorner's manifesto before? Well, it was this manifesto that the police had got their hands on. Dorner had posted the 11,000 word post on the 4th of February, one day after killing Monica and Lawrence. The manifesto revealed the dark mentality behind Dorner's actions. He started the post by stating, I know most of you who personally know me are in disbelief to hear from media reports that I am suspected of committing such horrendous murders and have taken drastic and shocking actions in the last couple of days. He further wrote, Unfortunately, this is a necessary evil that I do not enjoy, but must partake and complete for substantial change to occur within the LAPD and reclaim my name. That's what this is about, my name. Dorner was right when he wrote that most of the readers will be shocked after finding out that he was the killer. With always a smile on his face, Dorner was admired by every neighbor in La Palma, which is where he had moved in after being fired from his job. His manifesto also revealed why he killed the daughter of his attorney. 
In fact, Quan's family was Dorner's primary target because, in his own words, Randall Quan had failed to represent Dorner's interests in favor of those of the LAPD. But Dorner's main enemy was not the Quan family, but the LAPD. He also mentioned multiple police officers claiming that they were his targets, including Teresa Evans. On the night of February 7th, two LAPD officers received a report from a Riverside police officer saying that he had seen Dorner at a gas station in Corona, a city in Riverside County, California. After getting the report, the officers followed a suspicious pickup truck. The truck stopped at one point, with its driver exiting and firing a rifle at the officers. Luckily, both officers survived the attack. However, they gave up pursuing Dorner. Unfortunately, not all of Dorner's targets were that lucky. About 20 minutes after the Corona shooting, Dorner ambushed two Riverside police officers who were sitting in their patrol car at a red traffic light. Dorner's brutal attack resulted in the death of Officer Michael Crane, who died right at the moment, while the other cop was shifted to a hospital, where he fortunately survived. By this point, the LAPD had moved Officer Teresa Evans and her family to a safe area as she was the likely target of Dorner's next shooting. However, Dorner had other priorities. Realizing that his actions were about to bring the wrath of the whole California State Police, he decided to leave the state. After attacking the Riverside Police, Dorner tried to steal a boat in an attempt to flee to Mexico. However, his attempt was unsuccessful thanks to the bravery of the boat's captain. The following few days remained peaceful. By this point, authorities had set a $1 million reward for information leading to Dorner's current location. Following the announcement of the reward, the police received reports about Dorner's location being somewhere in the San Bernardino Mountains. Given the rough and hard terrain, an unmanned aerial vehicle was deployed by the authorities in an attempt to stop Dorner from crossing the Mexican border, but he wasn't found. Finally, on February 12th, the police got the information that they had been waiting for so long. The San Bernardino County Sheriff's Office responded to a call from a woman claiming that she was kept hostage by Dorner at a resort cabin who had now stolen her truck and left the house. The call sparked an immediate response. The police began searching almost every car near the area. The first cops to recognize Dorner were officers from the California Department of Fish and Wildlife who informed the state police and San Bernardino police about the sighting. A chase ensued with officers involved from multiple agencies. They chased Dorner to an empty cabin near Big Bear Lake. Dorner used the cabin as a fortification and attacked the police officers who were ready to put an end to this long-lasting chase. The first respondents were officers from San Bernardino County Sheriff's Office. During the first seconds of fighting, Dorner opened fire on two San Bernardino officers and hit both of them. Detective Jeremiah Mackey was pronounced dead right at the moment, while the other officer was transported to a hospital where he survived. By this point, a SWAT team had arrived on scene, which made it impossible for Dorner to escape the siege. The fight went on for a few hours before the cabin caught fire due to the pyrotechnic tear gas canisters shot to force Dorner out. As the fire continued to burn the cabin, the firing of a gun from inside the cabin finally came to an end. By this point, the fire had reached a very dangerous level, that entering the cabin was equivalent to suicide. As the SWAT team asked and waited for Dorner to come outside, they heard one last shot fired among the cracklings of the wood. On the following day, February 13, it was reported that human remains had been found in the search for Dorner's body in the ruins of the cabin, which were later confirmed to be Dorner's. The medical examiners also confirmed that Dorner died of a single self-inflicted gunshot wound to the head. Dorner's brutal killing spree terrorized thousands of citizens. But the person that he haunted the most is Teresa Evans, whom Dorner continues to terrorize to this day. I honestly don't think my life will ever be normal the way it was before, Evans said. This was such an extraordinary circumstance. I don't know if I'm ever going to feel safe in my home again. If you want to watch more such stories, please subscribe to the channel.